welcome to my studio and in this project I am starting with a background of line shape color and pattern I've already drawn with oil pastels the um, the lines and shapes and now and patterns and now I'm just add some more patterns with stencils with paint acrylic paint so this is a this is going to be a mixed media expressive portrait and I'm creating the background for it right now so already with the oil pastels I've uh, drawn lines shapes colors and now I'm just adding some pattern or some decorative lines, some more decorative lines and more color. For This is going to be the back, start of the background. And that's acrylic paint I'm using right now with a paintbrush. I'm creating patterns with blue and uh, the, that's a shade and the red is a shade of magenta. And then I dry it. And now I'm going to use gesso, but I'm going to I'm going to thin down the gesso with some water because I want I do not want to cover this all up. I want some of this to show through, but I just want to knock it back to the background. So I kind of I use a spray bottle to help um, to help thin down the gesso and also wipe it away sometimes with a paper towel if it gets too thick and covers too much. Right there, I'm wiping it away with a paper towel. I am working on watercolor paper, 16 by 20 inches. And if, if you choose to follow along in this project, um, you could do this in your art journal, you could do it on mixed media paper, you could do it on watercolor paper, you could do it at any size you want. So now I'm going to start the portrait after the gesso had dried. And with an oil pastel, it's actually a water-soluble oil pastel, but it doesn't matter. It could be regular oil pastels. I'm with a very light color. I'm drawing in the oval for the head and the neck and also the neck and shoulders. Now uh, I'm going to use a graphite stick, but if you want, go ahead and use a pencil. These are happen to be water-soluble graphite sticks. And with my fingers, I just showed you thirds. You kind of want to divide the face up into thirds from the top of the head to where, where the eyes are would be the first third. The second third is from the eyes to the map, the eyes to the bottom of the nose. And the, the, the third third would be the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin. And um, when I start drawing in the lips and the and the nose, I do have to adjust where the eyes went. I'm drawing contours, like that. that's the contour of the chin, I'm contours of the cheekbones, I'm contours of the upper eye sockets. So part of being an expressive portrait is that it's okay if it's not perfect and that it's a little wonky. Okay, now just the bottom of the ear lobes. Adding, I'm adding more on the Hot, the higher I need, I mean, I need more um, height for the head there to make to make the proportions more correct. Off camera, I have already um, put in the eyes, and um, okay, you see, I have on the plate yellow ochre, a very light shade of pinkish peach and a dark brown and um, off camera I also had started this with oil pastels but I decided to switch over to paint so that's why you do see somewhat color already on the on this of uh, on the face but I'm painting over it. I decided paint was the better way to go and I'm using the lightest color first like just a very light peachy pink and next I'm gonna go in with a little bit uh, darker color that would be yellow ochre and that would be yellow ochre would be for the sides of the the sides of the head along where the eyes are, the sides of the forehead, the sides of the neck, different places where it just gets a little bit darker. And 
And then now I'm mixing some darker brown with a yellow ochre because now I just wanted a little bit, and now I want it like the third third shade of darkness, or I don't know if it's the third shade of darkness, but uh, a little bit darker right now, and that would be under the lips, under the chin. And in between the eyes and around the eye sockets and around the sides of the, the around the sides of the cheeks and around both sides of the head. And I'm using um, magenta now for the hair because I am going to make like magenta color magenta slash pink colored hair and. This is not meant to be a realistic portrait. It's it's meant to be expressive in that the brush marks are going to show. The, I'm going to leave certain pencil marks showing. So it's an expressive portrait. Actually, I'm doing this uh, portrait for my imagination. If you need a reference, go ahead use a reference. If you need if if it's very difficult for you to uh, paint a face from your imagination. And it's darker at the hairline. So I'm just adding some blue to make it darker at the hairline. And I'll add some highlights later on the hair. And then it's also darker like on the inside of the hair. Oh, off camera, I did use light pink. I, I mixed white with magenta to make a light pink. And I, the, the bottom lip is always lighter than the top lip. And then I'm adding pink around like on the cheeks, the forehead, the neck. And um, I'm going back in just with some dark again. And this is a... Um, I like a quarter inch round brush, which I could tell you the number of the paintbrush down below in the description box, but it's a, a smaller round brush and, I, and I'll have to put down in the description box what the other size brush was. But now I'm going in with pure white for the bottom of the lip, for the highlights on the hair, also for the nose, the bridge of the nose, uh, right there on the forehead, just going in with pure white and blending it with my fingers. Also on the chin, because the chin protrudes. And also in the eye, off camera, I did do the eyes. Um, the highlights in the eyes should be pure white. So um, this is shots of the finished picture. And I've added writing as well. And also, you can see I did not erase all my pencil lines. In the expressive style, I, mean, I am leaving pencil lines showing. You can see I've used like expressive uh, brushwork, which keeps it painterly. And this is uh, this is my version of what I mean by an expressive portrait. I'm also, because I'm adding my thoughts afterwards, I'm adding my thoughts, I write down my thoughts all around the portrait, again, as a way to be expressive. Again, you, see, you can see those pencil lines still showing on the chin and the mouth. I'm going to leave them there. It's just a part of it being an expressive portrait, not, not realist, not terribly realistic. 